Hey there, Justin DeLay from Reverb.com. We're back, and today we're taking a closer look at the synth sounds of John Carpenter, who many of you know as the director of such seminal 80s horror movies as Halloween and The Fog. But what you might not have known is that John Carpenter also wrote the scores to many of his famous movies. So today we'll take a closer look at how to play some of those famous pieces, as well as how to recreate some of those classic 80s synth tones. We'll start with the most famous of them all, Halloween. Okay, so we are going to start today with uh, one of the most famous uh, riffs from the horror genre, which is, of course, Halloween. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at how to play it today, and we're gonna take a look at how to play it specifically on uh, this awesome, awesome, a little bit under the radar synthesizer uh, called the Ensonic ESQ-1. So without further ado, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna pull up one of the piano sounds. We'll take a listen to some of the other stuff as well. And we're gonna dive right into the Halloween riff, which as everyone knows, goes like this. Right, okay. So, what is happening here? So this is a five, four timing. What does that mean? Well, the vast majority of music that you listen to uh, is four, four time, which means you can pretty much count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, over and over and over again. Pretty simple. Five, four says that there are five beats before the pattern starts back over. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more to it than that, but that is the key move. And, and what you'll see is that a John Carpenter uh, classic move from a composition perspective is that he writes a riff and then does what's called modulating, literally takes the exact same pattern, exact same spacing of notes, and slide it down a half step, which would, which would be the first change in the song, so that you would get... So again, exact same pattern, down a half step, and then when you modulate it back up. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna dive into more of the structure of the song itself, starting with the drums. So what we have here is, uh, this is a Roland TR-606. Today what we're doing is actually sequencing uh, some samples that I made of the 606 in Ableton Live. Again, ESQ uh, is playing via MIDI. Drums are playing from Ableton. And what we'll hear in a second is the Moog, uh, the Model D kick in for the big, rich uh, bass line here. Uh, right now, this is set up very, very simply um, to really uh, create those big, swelling, uh, sweeping bass hits that kind of linger for a while. Now we're using the same um, overdrive trick that we used previously to give a little more grit. Um, and we have the, the loudness contour or the amp envelope, uh, if you will, set to a long decay and a, and a high sustain again so that even after the note has been hit, it'll slowly kind of drift away. Now we're hearing the Juno 106 come in to sort of fill out higher frequencies start to come in as the track progresses. Turn it down a little bit. And then we hear the, the motif start over again. So uh, again, in terms of the, the actual instruments that John Carpenter used to create uh, some of these classic tones, you know, as we discussed already, uh, uh, there's actually quite a bit of, of acoustic piano uh, in many of his uh, in many of his works, like Halloween, like The Fog. Um, he was also a huge, huge user of the Prophet Five uh, and the ultra rare big brother of it, the Prophet Ten. John Carpenter also used the famous Elka synth, which uh, is unfortunately a little too rare to be here uh, in, uh, in, in my studio today, um, but used that for a lot of um, the big pad sounds, the big atmospheric sort of 
swelling sounds. Use the Prophet uh, quite a bit for that as well. And uh, you know, if you're looking to recreate some of these sounds, the Arturia uh, V Collection software plugins are incredible, and the, the Prophet 5 emulation is amazing. Um, as well as, of course, Dave Smith has created the Prophet 6 now, which is a, a modern, current, updated version of that original Prophet sound. You hear it and you instantly think John Carpenter. I think this, to me, to my ears, is the most signature of all of his sounds. Now we're going to take a closer look at one of my favorite John Carpenter scores, the main theme from The Fog. Okay, so real quickly, what's happening here in The Fog is uh, another classic uh, John Carpenter move of a repeating uh, harmonic motif uh, that's going to be modulated up and down, uh, and then that same riff is played in one octave on the piano, and then the same riff is played up an octave on uh, a synthesizer. So let's take a closer look at the sounds. We're going to let the piano uh, keep doing its thing uh, from the MIDI sequence and take a closer look at what we're doing on the Juno 106, which is the high synth part. Eventually we'll bring in the Moog to fill out the bottom end, and then we'll play the chords on the Prophet 5. So what, we're, what we have here currently on the Juno 106 is really just a medium filter, uh, medium attack, kind of smoother sound. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with it a little bit so you can hear how uh, you know, subtle variations can, can make it sound more like, uh, strings, uh, more synthetic, um, and, uh, and we'll make it sound a little bit spookier uh, towards the end as well. So first things first, let's just get our filter dialed in here so you can hear it bring this filter up really get all that crispiness in the high end i'm actually going to bring it down a little bit smooth it out you can hear that really sort of beautiful beautiful smoothness we're going to increase the resonance a little bit to give it a little bit more of that clinky twinkly kind of sound really cool there uh the chorus is on and to actually uh, emphasize that sound a little bit more, we're gonna bring in the square wave. We're gonna use the LFO at a relatively uh, fast rate uh, to, to um, pulse wave modulate the square wave. So you'll hear even more of that harmonic movement. And what that is gonna sound like is this. Really cool. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a little bit of that same LFO onto the pitch to get a little bit of vibrato, make it sound a little bit creepier. And we can adjust how quickly that, that vibrato comes in with the delay time um, so we can have it come in immediately. All right, so creepy, or again, delay, push it a little bit. So it's just kind of the tails of the synth. There you go, right? And, and, you know, again, in a very short period of time, we've taken a simple sound and have really structured it and shaped it into something much more interesting to the ears and something I think fits the, the arrangement. So we've got the piano going, we've got the high synth line from the Juno, and now we're gonna take a closer look at uh, the sound uh, coming from the Model D. And so what we're doing here, first and foremost, uh, probably the most important part of the sound is the fact that we are pushing the overload circuit really, really hard. Uh, we know that because the overload light is blinking. But what that does is it, it takes, you know, again, this is just a single note. It's a monophonic synthesizer, one note at a time. But by pushing it so hard through that overdrive, it creates extra harmonics that, that start to fill out the sound more and make it feel a bit more like a pad sound. Again, you know, obviously it's not going to be like a chord that you would play on a synth like this where you're going to have multiple notes, but you're just, you're just adding harmonic complexity to the sound, and it sounds awesome. Zooming out a little bit, basically all we've done is we've created a long decay uh, cycle for the sound so you get those big, looming notes. Now we get to uh, the most probably John Carpenter-esque uh, of, of the synths that we have here today, which is Prophet 5. So, you know, just, just sweeping the filter here, we can dial in a whole range of 
interesting upper you know, noisy, crinkly, crinkly kind of sounds uh, that add just a huge amount of, of variation and, and depth to the sound. One of the things we can also do is bring in more noise into the sound itself, literally atonal noise, which is gonna just add more of that grit and character to what we're doing. Finally today, we take a look at one of John Carpenter's earliest scores, Assault on Precinct 13. I love this track. It sounds like it's being run through uh, a distortion or at least an overdrive, uh, and it very well could be, but I really love to try to get those sounds out of the synth itself. Um, we're actually gonna dial back the, the overdrive a little bit so we can hear a little bit more of the gain, and to, to, to give this a little bit more interesting crispness, I would say we're gonna actually turn on the noise. We will use white noise in this case. It's gonna have a little bit better uh, frequency content in the upper range. And just for fun, uh, we're gonna change oscillator three, which is the, the upper oscillator in this sound from a, um, from a saw wave to a reverse saw wave, which is a pretty rare and special uh, waveform in the Model D, and that'll sound like. Okay, so we've got our drum uh, line going, which is the combination of 606 and the hi-hats from the Prophet 5. Uh, we've got a MIDI sequence running, controlling the Moog, uh, and then one last uh, crazy sound that we love that we wanted to show how to do. In the original track, there's this great uh, descending pitch, like a string sort of descending uh, that we're gonna recreate here on the Juno 106. It's actually really, really simple. It takes advantage of the fact that uh, one of the classic control mechanisms of, the, of Roland's, generally speaking, and definitely of the Juno's, is this, this bender, which allows you to bend down and bend up. So what we're gonna do is we've got to set up for a huge amount of pitch bend down. Uh, we're just going to play the note, slowly bend it down. Uh, it's just a simple kind of uh, mid-rangey string sound with a lot of reverb. Uh, it sounds like this. Again. Okay, that concludes our closer look at the synth sounds of John Carpenter. I hope you enjoyed our deeper dive into some of the harmonic, uh, as well as rhythmic motifs, as well as uh, the classic synth sounds and techniques of the master of horror himself, John Carpenter. So now it's your turn. Tell us in the comments below your favorite synth soundtracks. We'll be watching. Happy Halloween from Reverb.com.